Hello, friend. Welcome to the Whole Word Podcast. This is Pastor Pitts Evans. On this podcast, we read and discuss one chapter of God's Word per episode. Let's go now to the Bible and see what the Lord has for us today. Luke chapter 3. In the fifteenth year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, Herod, tetrarch of Galilee, his brother Philip, tetrarch of Iturea and Trachonitis, and Lysanias, tetrarch of Abilene, during the reign of the high priest Annas and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. He went into all the country around the Jordan, preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. As it is written in the book of the words of Isaiah the prophet, a voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight paths for him. Every valley shall be filled in, every mountain and hill made low. The crooked roads shall become straight and rough ways smooth, and all people will see God's salvation. John said to the crowds coming out to be baptized by him, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the coming wrath? Produce fruit in keeping with repentance, and do not begin to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father. For I tell you that out of these stones God can raise up children for Abraham. The axe is already at the root of the trees, and every tree that does not produce good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. What should we do then? the crowd asked. John answered, Anyone who has two shirts should share with the one who has none, and anyone who has food should do the same. Even tax collectors came to be baptized. Teacher, they asked, what should we do? Don't collect any more than you're required to, he told them. Then some soldiers asked him, and what should we do? He replied, don't extort money and don't accuse people falsely. Be content with your pay. The people were waiting expectantly and were all wondering in their hearts if John might possibly be the Messiah. John answered them all, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I am will come, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his barn, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. And with many other words John exhorted them and proclaimed the good news to them. But when John rebuked Herod the Tetrarch because of his marriage to Herodias, his brother's wife, and all the other evil things he had done, Herod added this to them all. He locked John up in prison. When all the people were being baptized, Jesus came to be baptized too. And as he was praying, heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, whom I love. With you I am well pleased. Now Jesus himself was about thirty years old when he began his ministry. He was the son, so it was thought, of Joseph, the son of Heli, the son of Mattat, the son of Levi, the son of Melchi, the son of Janai, the son of Joseph, the son of Mattathias, the son of Amos, the son of Nahum, the son of Esli, the son of Nagai, the son of Matt, the son of Mattathias, the son of Simeon, the son of Josek, the son of Joda, the son of Joannan, the son of Resa, the son of Zerubbabel, the son of Shetiel, the son of Neri, the son of Melchi, the son of Adai, the son of Kosam, the son of El Madam, the son of Er, the son of Joshua, the son of Eleazar, the son of Jorim, the son of Mattat, the son of Levi, the son of Simeon, the son of Judah, the son of Joseph, the son of Joannim, the son of Eliakim, the son of Mela, the son of Mina, the son of Mattathiah, the son of Nathan, the son of David, the son of Jesse, the son of Obed, 
the son of Boaz, the son of Salmon, the son of Nashon, the son of Amenadab, the son of Ram, the son of Hezron, the son of Perez, the son of Judah, the son of Jacob, the son of Isaac, the son of Abraham, the son of Terah, the son of Nahor, the son of Serug, the son of Ru, the son of Peleg, the son of Eber, the son of Shelah, the son of Cainan, the son of Arphaxad, the son of Shem, the son of Noah, the son of Lamech, the son of Methuselah, the son of Enoch, the son of Jared, the son of Mahalel, the son of Kenan, the son of Enosh, the son of Seth, the son of Adam, who was the son of God. Now, in Hebrew, there are no uh, words for grandson, great-grandson, great-great-grandson, or grandfather, great-grandfather, and so forth. It's just father, and descendants are sons. And so your ancestor is your father or your mother, and your descendants are sons and daughters, no matter how many generations. And so this genealogy refers to the son of, the son of, the son of, but it's descended from. It goes all the way back to Adam. It gives the lineage um, all the way back to Adam. And most scholars believe that this genealogy in Luke varies from the genealogy in Matthew because it's really Mary's genealogy and not uh, Joseph's genealogy. Matthew has Joseph's genealogy and Luke has Mary's genealogy. Whatever the case, when you read son of many times in the scriptures, it's descendant of or father of. It's really ancestor of, no matter how many generations. So we get more information on John the Baptist in this chapter. And there's a very ironic statement. In verse 2, it says, During the, the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, the son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. So what's so ironic about that? Well, John's father and mother were both descended from Aaron. His father was a priest serving in the temple, and not just a priest, but one of the exclusive orders of priests who were able to offer incense in the temple itself. And so John, as an Aaronic descendant, should have been serving in the temple, but he was not in the temple. He's out in the woods. John possibly could have been the high priest of that generation, but instead, two imposters, Annas and Caiaphas, were serving as the high priest of that generation in the temple while John was out ministering in the woods. So the irony is that John should have been in the temple, according to the will of the Lord and the word of the Lord, but these imposters, these posers, were there. It's interesting in modern times that um, many Orthodox Jews recognize that the, the reign of Caiaphas was very corrupt. These men were sympathizers with the Romans, and they were um, political appointees. They were not godly men, as is evidenced by the way they behaved. And so John was out in the woods, and what was he doing? He was preaching a baptism of repentance. Now, John did not originate baptism. The idea of ritual immersion had been part of Judaism since Mount Sinai. And so the Jews would often uh, be ritually immersed as a sign that they were starting over. It was a sign of purity and holiness and recommitment to the Lord. But John baptized them or immersed them as a sign of their uh, repentance and as a sign that God was forgiving their sins and washing their sins away. And so he built on what was already known in Judaism, this ritual immersion, with this baptism of repentance. So John's baptism was not a believer's baptism. It was a baptism, a symbolic baptism, symbolizing the forgiveness of sins. And the gospel writer quotes Isaiah, who said, Someone would come who is a voice of one calling in the wilderness. Prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight paths for him. Every valley shall be filled in, every mountain and hill made low. The crooked roads shall become straight, the rough ways smooth, and all people will see God's salvation. This role was John the Baptist's role. He was there to prepare the way for the Messiah. And so the people were expectant, and they thought, well, maybe John's the Messiah. They asked him in verse 15 if, if he were the Messiah, and he answered them. He said, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I am will come, the straps of whose sandals I'm not worthy to untie. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire." So Jesus comes to baptize us with the Holy Spirit and with fire. 
John was able to baptize in water, but Jesus comes to immerse us in the Holy Spirit of God, in the fire of God. And so Jesus, too, was baptized. And um, the baptismal formula for Jesus was Jesus, the Son on earth, the Holy Spirit descending on him from heaven, and then the voice of the Father speaking from heaven about Jesus. So Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. In verse 21, when all the people were being baptized, Jesus was baptized, too. And as he was praying, heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, whom I love. With you I am well pleased. And so Jesus, the Son, was on earth in the waters of the baptismal uh, river, being baptized. The second person of the Godhead, the Holy Spirit, was visible in this baptism, descending from heaven. And then God the Father spoke from heaven about his Son. He said, You are my Son, who I love. With you I am well pleased. And so, is the Lord our God one God? Yes, he is. Is the Lord our God one God revealed in three persons? He is, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So for those who don't recognize the truth of the Holy Spirit and God the Father and the Son having their own special and unique identities, they can see them in these Trinitarian baptisms in several of the Gospels. Jesus began his ministry about age 30, like Joseph and David had done before him and as Old Testament priests did. But what about you, friends? When will you begin, or when did you begin to minister in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ? You see, you don't have to vocationally be a pastor to minister in the name of Jesus. Jesus became a public minister at age 30, and of course, he changed the world. I came to the ministry when I was 42 years old. I'm not changing the world, but I'm doing my little part. But what are you doing? You came to Christ. You were saved to serve. And so I want to pray into that today. Lord, I pray for those that are listening today, that they would not just be consumers of the Word of God, but they would be dispensers of the will of God on earth, that they would give their testimony of the reality of Jesus everywhere they go. Lord, may your voice be heard through their mouths today and every day. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for listening to this episode of The Whole Word. It was brought to you by Whole Word Fellowship and the Northern Virginia House of Prayer. If you were encouraged, please share our podcast with your friends. We'd also appreciate it if you'd hit subscribe in your favorite podcast app and take a few moments to write a review. If you'd like more information on our church and our ministry, you can go to wholeword.net or wholewordpodcast.com for more information. Thank you again, and may the Lord Jesus bless you today and always.